Hello, this is the lesson on spontaneous generation. As you can see from the definition, spontaneous generation is the belief that life can arise from non-living material at any given moment. Hmm, do you see a problem with that? Well, if you remember from the cell theory, one of the tenets or important pieces of the cell theory is that cells come from pre-existing cells. Life makes life. So the belief that non-living material can give rise to life, we now know it's not true. But hundreds of years ago, especially before the scientific revolution, this was a very commonly held belief among the populace. You know, regular people like you and I would have believed that maggots grow out of raw meat. Look at this. It sounds ridiculous now, but the belief that if you put raw meat outside, gives rise to maggots would come from, hey, if enough people, you know, leave meat around and a day or two later there's maggots crawling around it, it's not so far-fetched to have people think, oh, maggots just came out of the meat. That's where maggots come from and that's where flies come from. We now know that's not true. Of course, adult flies lay their eggs on the meat as a nutrient source for these little baby flies. Also, the belief that mice could be born out of hay Sounds even more ridiculous, but if you lived in a farm environment and you saw that, hey, every time it rains, mice come out of the hay and they're kind of scurrying around. Well, <laughs> that would be because during the rain, the mice are getting shelter inside the barn and happen to be um, trying to find a spot within the hay to stay dry. So it's just uh, misinformation and uh, pseudoscience is a term for it. This is also known as abiogenesis, meaning the opposite of biogenesis. That's what happens when you put an A in front of it. So this term biogenesis is what we know to be true now, that life, bio, actually creates or is the beginning of more life. So how did we come to arrive at this belief in biogenesis to know that this is how it is? Well, we can thank three different scientists, and here they are. Francesco Redi, a 17th century Italian scientist who sought to disprove spontaneous generation. And if you remember, uh, you know, 17th century is actually the 1600s. So he set up an experiment with jars and raw meat. Here is Mr. Redi, quite a regal gentleman. And he has his jars here. Here's the control. And here's his, of course... What would it be called? The experimental jar, experimental group. And let me change my pen to a thick red because, oops, that should be red. This is supposed to be the raw meat we talked about a moment ago. So in the jar, he's got raw meat in each one. And to vary the control in the experimental, he covered one of them and left the other open. So the experimental jar is supposed to be different from sort of the natural scenario. And the natural scenario that people were used to seeing at that time was, hey, if you leave raw meat out, flies are born from it. So he thought, hey, if I leave it exposed to the air, that will let adult flies lay their eggs, and I can prove that, hey, it's flies that are actually making these maggots. So the control, of course, had a bunch of flies going inside of there, laying their eggs, and before you knew it, little maggots were crawling around. And of course, with the experimental group, flies could smell the meat, but they can't get in. Sad face for the flies. But you know what? This didn't completely disprove spontaneous generation. There were skeptics at the time that said, hey, hey, Francesco, I don't know what you're talking about. You see, when you did this jar here, with the, the covering on it, with this gauze or this, this mesh on top of it, you prevented some of the life force in the air from getting inside. And because you prevented this life force from getting to the meat, that prevented the maggots from emerging. So you didn't disprove anything, Francesco. He was, of course, convinced of, of this biogenesis, but uh, there were still skeptics in the 1600s. An interesting fact about Francesco before I move on is that there's actually a crater on the planet Mars named after him. Uh, and another interesting fact is he was actually an accomplished poet in addition to being a scientist. About a hundred years later, you get Lazzaro Spallanzani, another Italian scientist. 
uh, lived in the 1700s, and he built upon Reddy's work to disprove the same theory. This time he used flasks, or beakers, with broth, and boiled one of them to show that, hey, you can kill this living stuff in the broth and prevent it from spoiling. So let me draw a couple beakers. Uh, flasks would actually be uh, typically shaped like this, but I think it's just easier to draw uh, the beakers. So, there's the control beaker, and here's the experimental. So with both of them, he boiled. He boiled the broth because he thought, hey, this broth right here, if you leave it exposed to air, bacteria, and at the time he didn't call it bacteria, but he thought that there were these little living things that could fall in it and make more living things and cause it to spoil. So with the control, he left it open. With the experimental group, he closed it after boiling so that nothing new could come in. And of course, after a period of time, the control group got a bunch of microscopic bacteria in it and it spoiled. It, you could actually see a color change and it looked bad. But this one, the experimental group, didn't go bad. Once again, the skeptics thought there's some kind of life force or sometimes they call it a vegetative force that he prevented from going inside of this experimental uh, beaker. And hey, Lazzaro, you know, you're, you're preventing the vital force from going in. You didn't disprove anything. Uh, but he showed that boiling could definitely get rid of this stuff. Next up, we have another interesting scientist. But first, let me tell you that this gentleman, Lasado Spallanzani, unfortunately died of bladder cancer. And a really strange fact about him is if you go to Italy, there's a town that has his preserved bladder on display. So that's something that most humans cannot claim, having their organs on display for others to see after death. Uh, next up, Louis Pasteur, and of course the process of pasteurization is named after him. Uh, alcoholic beverages, milk is pasteurized, and it's a way of flash heating to get rid of germs or bacteria. It doesn't get rid of 100% of them, but it certainly prolongs uh, the life of the beverage so that you don't get as many people getting sick with infections. And he's a famous 19th century French scientist who officially disproved spontaneous generation thanks to his germ theory. And he was convinced that there were these little germs, bacteria, microscopic, but they're there, and they actually are what cause people to get sick, and they get transferred from person to person or animal to animal. And it's not this superstitious thing where uh, it's spirits or demons or a vital force in the air that's magical and could, you know, cause life to appear. So, so thanks to his swan neck flask, or also called gooseneck flask, he was able to officially disprove spontaneous generation. So this brilliant glass making, you have this, uh, this uh, head of the flask or this tip that's curved in a way where if bacteria from the air come in here, they, they will land, and bacteria can be airborne, but they'll land in this part of the opening and they cannot crawl up and get into the broth. So the amazing thing is he boiled both. He boiled this one and this one, you know, so that it was sterile. You didn't have any, uh, you know, bacteria in there. He boiled it to a high enough temperature. And if you wait long enough, the amazing thing is after waiting with group one, it looks perfectly sterile still. It won't spoil. And it's because the airborne bacteria can't get up and in. And of course, those people who claim there's a vital force in the air, they got nothing to say here because... There was an opening at the tip. Air can freely move in there, and as long as you don't you know, blow into it, these bacteria that settle at the bottom, they're not going to end up going inside. Uh, bacteria, you know, they can't swim up. But you can see that, yeah, after just days and days and days, no growth. I actually had a professor in college with one of these in his office, and he said it had been there for years, and the broth still looked sterile, amazingly. But of course, in group two here, if you boil it and then take off that swan neck, bacteria can easily land in there and you get microbial growth. You get it spoiling. So this helped prove his germ theory. And thanks to Louis Pasteur, we also have vaccines, not just pasteurization. So thank you, sir. Um, an unfortunate fact about him is uh, 
one of the reasons that he was probably motivated to develop vaccines and save lives is uh, two of his children actually died of um, viral infections when they were very young. In conclusion, thanks to the work of these three scientists and others, spontaneous generation was debunked and biogenesis is now the accepted theory. Science!